Hey uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on the Pharmacist Academy channel. Woo! <laughs> okay, so today we will be discussing errors and omissions and then we will go over some practice questions to help you guys really get comfortable with this. Okay, so just a little breakdown once again. Um, so remember, the errors and omissions portion of the compound and exam is going to be part of day one, okay? And this is going to make up 20% of the day one portion. They give you 10 prescription scenarios, and for each scenario, uh, it contains a prescription label um, and photo of the product chosen to fulfill the order. Um, I'm going to show you examples on the next slide so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So your job is to basically assess the prescription, the label, and the photo to determine if it's okay to be dispensed. Or if you as the pharmacist feels like it's not okay, then you also have to indicate that. So all you have to do is indicate that there's something wrong with the prescription and indicate what is wrong with it. You don't need to solve the issue, okay? So, I also want to let you guys know um, these practice questions that we're about to go over. Um, I did not create these questions. Um, I found these uh, questions and I'm using it uh, to help you guys understand this topic. If you want more practice questions, you can just Google it. Um, if you just Google errors and omissions, pharmacy practice questions, you're going to see a ton of them, okay? But I include a few just so I could walk through them with you guys. So here we have a prescription on the left, a label on the top right, and the medication that was selected by the technician on the bottom right. So when you get this, you want to be very thorough. You want to assess everything. And I mean every single thing. So from the top of the prescription to the bottom, and make sure everything that's written matches what's on the label and the right medication is selected. So let's go through this one. So we have the physician, uh, C. Pain, MD. Which is very important, okay? Always look at the, the physician's um, title because sometimes they may be, let's say, like a podiatrist or a dentist prescribing something that is out of their scope. So that part is very important. You can always catch errors in that part. So you got that part. Um, then you move down to the patient's information. That is extremely important. By the way, the DEA numbers right here, these are always going to be correct. So don't worry about calculating it. There is a way to calculate it, which I'm not going to go over. But assume that it's going to be correct during the exam. It's always going to be correct. So back to the patient information. This is another part where you could catch many errors. So sometimes what they do is that they will spell, like the patient's information here is not going to match what's on the label sometimes, okay? So always compare these two together. Um, then you have the Rx number. Also look at that. I've never seen that, but you never know. Just double check. So then you go into the, the meat and potatoes of the prescription, so you have to assess, okay, I banned your name, 150 milligram tablet, dispense one box, take one tablet every week, every week. So you have to know your abbreviations if you don't, okay? So in this case, QW means every week on an empty stomach for three months, okay? So with that, you also want to make sure that matches what's on the label, okay? Um, I mean, I already know what's going on with this prescription, uh, even though I didn't, like, I don't really know, I didn't know the answer at first, but I could just tell because as you can see, just look at, if you know, um, if you're familiar with, um, uh, these medications, uh, for osteoporosis, 
these medications uh, like abandronate, the 150 milligram tablets is actually given once monthly. And even it shows it on the medication that was selected, okay? So another thing you want to check is the DAW box. That's very, very important. So if they write generic, right, and they put DAW, you can honestly just dispense whichever is cheaper, whether it's the brand or the generic. If they put the brand name like Boniva and they put DAW, then you have to dispense the brand name. Okay, and if they don't put anything, then you're free to dispense whatever. But always remember, it has to be the cheapest one for the patient. So in this case, uh, we see the mistake. We caught it right away. Um, this medication, take one tablet every week. That's incorrect. It's supposed to be once monthly. Okay, so let's say if you didn't know that uh, Ibanjanate 150 milligrams was given once monthly. In this case, it tells you on the medication box, um, so then you would know. If not, then I guess you're out of luck. But it's very rare for them to put these kind of those kind of questions. There's usually some clue in here that will help you determine if it's okay to dispense. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Um, so once again, from the top to the bottom. So M Vong M D. Um, so what I do sometimes is once, once I look here, I also check the name down here because there's really three places where you're going to see the prescriber's name. So up top here, over here, then on the label also. So you can just quickly check to see if it matches. The DEA number, like I said, is always going to be correct. So don't worry. Then you check the patient's information. So William Water, William Water. Uh, 10 Lexington Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11201. Okay, so this one matches. Um, you check the RX number, 526-849, 526-849. This one matches. Now we go into the medication. So this one is pu Purinathol. Um, and they want you to dispense 30 tablets. Um, and this is the, the SIG right here for you. Um... So with this one, what I automatically notice is that this is the incorrect medication, okay? So Purinthol is actually uh, mercaptopurine. So it's not as a tyroprene, it's actually mercaptopurine. So in this case, uh, they selected the wrong medication. Even though it's the same milligrams, it's not the medication that you, the patient was supposed to get. So that would be the error in this case. They selected the wrong medication. So if you didn't know that this was not the brand new of as a thioprene, then once again it's gonna it's gonna be tough. Um, that's why it's very important to definitely practice your brand name and generics, uh, especially the top. I believe top three hundred. They do well in my school. They did the they usually did the top three hundred medications, and we had to know the brand name. Um, the generic name and the indication. So we got a lot of practice with that. Okay. So the next one, once again, from the top, it seems like this prescriber is the only one that keeps prescribing. Anyway, so M Vong MD. Okay, we pay attention to that. M Vong MD. M Vong MD. All right, that's the same doctor. Okay. DA number is correct. Patient name Jim Chris matches. 77 Iron Street, Brooklyn, New York. 77 Iron Street, in Brooklyn, New York. 11201. 11201. Okay, so right patient, right doctor. Everything looks good. So then let's look at the RX number. 526849. Okay, looks good. Matches exactly what's on the label. Now we have Zyprexa here. 10 milligrams. Um, you're going to dispense 30. And here's the uh, the directions. So just make sure it matches what's on the um, the labels. I press okay. Dispense thirty. Um, take one tablet sublingual. Take one tablet as needed sublingual. Um, okay, so this is the right medication also. So is there any issue with this one? Yeah. 
So the issue with this one is that antipsychotics are maintenance chronic medications. These are not medications where you take, you know, when you need it. There's no such thing as take one tablet of Zyprexa when you're experiencing um uh like psychotic visions or something like that or hallucinating. There's no such thing. They have to take it consistently every single day. Um, so that's the error here. It's not PRN. It's every day. Because if you do PRN, there might be a chance that the patient might not take it certain days. Okay. So once again, if you didn't know that, then um, I don't know. I guess like just, just keep practicing um, and keep searching for practice questions. And you're going to come across these kind of questions um, so that you're aware. Okay. Next one. M von M D M von M D M von M D. There's the patient name right here. Patient name right here. It matches. Um, the address six thirty one Heart Place. Six thirty one Heart Place. Matches. Uh, Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. One one two zero one. One one two zero one. Okay, so that looks good. Um, then we look at the Rx number. So it's 526-849, 526-849. And okay, that looks good also. Now we look at the Joxin Elixir. So the Joxin Elixir right here. Okay, they didn't put the, um, the concentration. But it comes in only one concentration. Um... So don't worry about that in this case. Uh, so the label also lists this concentration right here for you. So dispense 60 ml. You can't see it very well, but I don't think they would give you like like the bottle. You can't say that the bottle is not 60 ml or something like that because it's possible for them to like pour it out and things like that. So don't don't really focus on that. Okay. Now, the directions is to take 0 0.025 milligrams once daily, okay? Um, no DAW in this box. Uh, okay, so I already, okay, I see exactly what's going on here. So look at the concentration here. So 0 0.05 milligrams per ml, and they want you to take 0 0.025 milligrams, right? So that's going to be half, that's going to be half of this. Right, so that's not one ml because one ml is 0 0.05. 0 0.25 milligrams is gonna be half of that, so it will be 0 0.5 ml. Okay, so the um, the dose in this case it doesn't match, and that would be wrong. Next one we have the same prescriber M Vong DPM. Whoa, see that rings a bell because it's been MD so far, and now they just changed it to DPM. Also, one thing you guys should know is um, there's a list of um, prescriber titles, prescriber title abbreviations, if that's what they call it. But I'm just referring to these, like uh, MD, DPM, DO, NP, PA, those kind of um, things, okay? So it's very important that you know those things. I had a list one time of these things. Once I get it, I will post it for you guys to download for yourself. But it's very important because you have to know this is a podiatrist. Okay? This is a podiatrist right here. And so just make sure, okay, so it matches DPM, DPM. We're just going to keep going with the same flow because we don't even know what's going on in the prescription itself. We're just following our normal routine. Um... Ken Babby, Ken Babby, uh, 21 Forever Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11201. Okay, that looks good. 526 849, 526 849. That looks good. Viagra. Hmm. Now, this cannot be correct because a podiatrist would not be prescribing uh, Viagra. That is clearly out their scope of practice, okay? So this one is like pretty easy, but you had to like catch the podiatrist part. Once you caught that, you will know 
that they're not supposed to be prescribing Viagra, obviously. That would be out the scope of practice, okay? Uh, the next one, we have John Brody, okay, new doctor in town. John Brody, MD, John Brody, Dr. John Brody. Um, please don't say that this is wrong because there's John Brody MD here and this is just John Brody without the MD. Please don't, don't even do that to yourself. <laughs> okay. So in the same routine, patient name, Sophia Lauren, Sophia Lauren, 123 Main Street, Brooklyn, New York, 123 Main Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11201. Rx number is 526-849, 526-849. So that looks good so far. Now let's get into the medication. Esterase cream. Okay, esterase cream right here. Once again, they didn't put the concentration, but that's okay. All right, just assume that this is the correct concentration. Unless if they put the concentration and then the one here doesn't match. Okay, then there's a problem. But if they don't put it, just assume this is the correct one. Dispense one box. Insert one gram. Uh, okay, so that's probably by vaginally um, at bedtime. Okay. Uh, dispense as written. So this one, they want the esterase cream, the brand. Okay, so they got the brand. So now we take a look at the label. The label has to match. So actually, whenever you're looking at the directions, just make sure that it matches what's on the label. Okay, that's what you compare it to. When you look at the medication name, Look at the medication name, compare it to the label, and also compare it to what you're dispensing, okay? So in this case, insert one gram vaginally. But here they put rectally, okay? So that's the mistake. Um, that's the mistake right there. Uh, that's the wrong route you would put on your, on your exam paper. Wrong route of medication on the label. So wherever the error is, you have to also um, include that, okay, in your write-up. So that will be the end of this uh, presentation. Um, I hope you guys was able to get like a good idea of the kind of questions that they put on these errors and omissions. Um, just keep practicing. That's all I can say. Just Google more questions and practice these so that you could see different things because they could trick you in so many ways. Sometimes the prescription might say tablets but then the medication is actually capsules. Okay, that's another way. Sometimes the medication that the technician grabs is expired. Okay, so there's many different ways. And other times there's no error. Okay, so you have to watch out for that too. But overall, I hope you uh, have a better idea now. And if you have any questions, uh, just leave it in the comments or just inbox me. And once I get the list of the abbreviations for the prescriber titles, I will definitely post it for you guys to download. Um, but until then, take care uh, and just keep practicing. And good luck, okay? All right.